and strike him down. Notice I'm holding his arm for control. This way I could follow up with other techniques and to prevent him from getting back to his feet right away. The second way to get out of this hold, Mike, come back one more time, is if he hasn't sunken in completely yet and he hasn't pulled me back, all I really need to do is to stick my butt backwards and bring him over. Okay, so let's try that one more time. I'm gonna do it once without you though. From this position, I bend my knees, stick my butt out, and just try to put my head towards my toes as far as I can. So he's gonna grab, I lock on, bend my knees, stick my butt out, lean, and shake him off to the side. Noticing again, I'm holding his arm, ready to strike. If I needed to hold him down here for any reason, I take my knee and just place it on his ribs. This way he cannot move, punch, kick, or get up. The next attack we're going to cover is the straight punch. Uh, in real fighting situations, straight punches are rare, but they do occur, and it's an angle you want to learn how to control. So far, we've learned circular. Now we want to learn straighten. We're going to start this with a three-step drill. We're going to bring Mike back out. Now, what's real important is Mike doesn't walk around in a fighting position, even if he wants to attack me. So the way I'm going to pick up what he's doing is by watching his body language. If I was to punch, I'm going to punch towards the camera, my hands have to come up, and I need to step towards you. This is the signal for me to react. Once he's here, the hand is going to be quicker than the eye. It's going to be a little bit more difficult if he's faster than me. So once I see his hand get into position, that's like him taking his rifle and aiming it at me. I know that I'm in trouble. So what he's going to do, the three-step drill, and you practice this with your partner, the first time you stand there and your job is just to watch his body language. He's going to step and just put his punch right on your chin. Second time, he's going to do it slow again, but this time you're going to step out and block with two hands. And the way you're going to do the step, I'll show it sideways and then forward, you're going to step to the corner and just sweep the arms across. All right? Step out 45 degrees, sweep the arms across. The third time, you're going to go back, he's going to step in again, he's going to go fast, you're going to do your move and follow up with a palm strike. Okay, we're going to demonstrate that technique first on one side, then we're going to switch, we're going to show it on the other side, try to pick up the details of where I'm stepping, where my hands move. First part, I stand there and I just watch his body language. He steps in, slow, and he hits to my chin. And I watched that, he had to take a step, he had to pick his hands up, he started to twist, a lot of things happened there. He goes back, this time when he does it again, I do my defense. And he goes back. For the third time, he's going to come in nice and quick, and of course, I'm going to move nice and quick. So he goes, yeah. Okay, I'm going to show it one more time. He steps in nice and quick. Go, yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you from the other side in case you missed some of the little details. We're going to go back to slow first. I just watch him. He punches slow. All right, he goes back. He drops his hands. I watch him again. This time, I step out. I show the move. And I strike. If you notice, I'm covering this arm. I don't just drop this arm and let it go. I control it. If I decide after I strike him, I want to flip him, I want to knee him, I want to do something else, I want to have control of what he's doing. Third time, now we're going to go a little bit faster. I watch him. He comes in, and I strike with my palm, maintaining control of his arm and his head. For our next technique, we're going to bring Jared in. A uh, very common attack is a push. Now, the reason somebody would push you is to get you moving in the direction that we don't want you to move in, which is backwards. If I come up and push him, I know that he can't effectively attack me. And if he's off balance enough, he won't even be able to block anything that I throw at him. So really, the push is a setup for a push and a punch. The best way to stop this is when he comes in with his push is not let him do it. Once he does that, number one, he's not going to expect that to happen. Number two, I've eliminated the possibility of him punching me because he leaned off balance. Very simply, all you're doing like a robot is picking one hand up and slapping it to the side, like you're playing patty cake, up and to the side. What's important is that when his hand is out there, don't stand here and just try to move his hand. You need to cross your entire body. That takes too long. You're going to move his hand halfway, and you're going to take your body and step around. A second reason for stepping in is that if he pushes and I'm here, I can't reach him. But if he pushes and I step in with it, he's right here 
ready for me to follow up immediately. So let's show that a little bit faster. I see he approaches me, he pushes it, slap it to the side. If you noticed he lost balance, it's a good spot to chop him, elbow him, palm strike. All right, let's try it one more time, then we'll show it on the other side. He pushes, slap it, and strike. Ready? Right, let's switch places. I'm going to use the same hand just so they can see the other side. One, hit, elbow, or chop. All right, one more time. He pushes, one, and strike. So far we did a single push, which means he's pushing with one hand. Sometimes people will come in and push you with both hands. Again, the primary purpose is to knock you off balance so that they can take advantage of that situation. The double push can be handled in a number of ways, depending on when you perceive it coming at you. First one is exactly the same as the single push. He comes in, I see it, I slap it to either one side or I slap it to the other side. It really doesn't matter with two hands, either way I'm going to the outside of his body. The second way is to diffuse the power, which that means is when he comes forward, his energy is coming in. If I try to stop his energy or resist it, he's gonna knock me over. So what I do is I make his energy go in a big circle, which puts his head right in front of me, ready to be hit or struck. So all I do is pray, pray and clap, pray and clap. And while I'm doing it, I'm moving backwards. This way I don't get overwhelmed by his energy. So he comes in with his push, I clap, and I could come up with the strike immediately. So let's try it a little bit faster, one more time. One, and strike. What you'll also notice is I'm using my palm an awful lot. You can equate his head to a bowling ball. Of course, he's a lot more intelligent than a bowling ball, but it, the hardness is essentially the same. If I'm punching with my knuckles to his head, especially if I'm that highly trained, there's a very good chance of sustaining an injury. When you break the bone in your ring finger, they actually call it a barroom fracture because it happens so often. So one way we're going to prevent that is instead of using the hard bones of our hand, we're going to use our palm. It will prevent injury to us, but it will still cause sufficient damage to our opponent. So generally we want to use our palms, our forearms, our elbows. We want to limit the amount of punches we use with our knuckles. What we're going to do now is cover a technique that most people are very afraid of, and that's fighting on the ground. If it's your choice, do not go to the ground. The reason being is the person has a weapon, if there's more than one person, and the floor is very hard, it's not a place that you want to be. Most of the time you end up on the ground because you were a little too slow and you got hit. You got knocked down and the person is taking advantage of that. person is sitting on top of you with their knees around, trying to punch you. This is known as the mounted position because it's similar to mounting a horse. If you know how to get out of it, it's not such a big deal, but if you don't, there's no way out of it. So if somebody doesn't show you the right way, you cannot just throw the person off you. So what we're gonna cover now is the right way. I'm gonna show it on my own first, then I'm gonna bring my partner back out. From here, your knees are bent, the person's on top of you. We're gonna do this exercise, this is called a bridge, which is lifting our hips. At the same time, when we get to the top, we wanna throw him to the left or to the right. I'm gonna throw him this way, so I roll to one side. If I was throwing him to the other side, I would roll that way. Couple of things I need to make sure that I do. I need to trap his arm, and if I can, I need to trap his leg to prevent him from stopping his roll. All right, so we're gonna come back out. We're gonna start from the mounted position. All right, let's assume he got punched. Now, in this position, we're gonna pray again. We're gonna keep our hands in the middle. This way when he punches, we can shoot our hands inside. If my hands are here, he may get inside and hit me. One thing you wanna make sure is that your head is not on the floor. If your head's on the floor and you get hit, you're gonna absorb 100% of that impact. Okay, if he's punching, we're gonna, go ahead, punch. We're gonna put the hand through and we're gonna trap it. If he was choking, just place the hands, we're just gonna grab the arm. Either way, we're trapping the arm. So let's do the first one. We're gonna hook the arm. If we can, we're gonna trap the foot. Sometimes you can't get it, that's fine. We're gonna bridge with this hand, we're gonna push on his shoulder. We're gonna sit up straight and immediately punch to his groin. Okay, so let's try that again. We'll change the angle a little bit. Okay, our hands are in the middle, he punches, we shoot out, we trap his arm. We could either circle it or just pinch it into our body. Our other hand goes on his shoulder, number one, to prevent him from punching again, and number two, to help roll him. We trap his foot, we lift him, we roll, 
we sit up and we punch to the groin. After that, of course, we get up and we move out. Nah, I don't follow that. What, who are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna show some defenses now from the seated position. The seated defenses are essentially the same as the standing defenses, except obviously you're seated. One of your priorities is to get up as quickly as possible. We're gonna show you three variations, one against a straight punch, one against a hooking punch, and one against a person approaching you from the front. Now, if I grab a seat in this chair and I bring Jared out, psychologically, he doesn't want to punch me in the back of the head because he knows he's going to hurt his hand. So that means most of the punches are going to be directed towards my mouth or face region. When he comes in, the first one we're going to do is a circular punch. So maybe he's approaching from the side and he's going to hook towards my face. The double hand defense is the same. The only difference is, is as he does it, I want to stand up immediately. I follow up the same way and the advantage to the chair is that I could use the chair against him. So we're going to try that one more time. He's coming in a circular motion, the hands go up, strike, and I direct him into the chair. Ready? We'll do that one more time, just a little bit quicker. We're here, he punches. One, two, three. The next variation is more of a straight line motion. As the punch travels, I'm seated. I'm basically just going to lean forward. As I lean forward, I'm going to bring my hand up to deflect. So I have two things moving his arm, my hand moving his arm and my head getting out of the way. So now as he comes in with his punch, I lean and same thing like before, I stand up, I strike him and I redirect him. All right. The reason for directing him in this, bringing him in this direction is when he's punching, his weight is coming in this way anyway. As I get behind him, it's easy to keep his weight going where he wants it to go instead of trying to force him back in the